uh, ooh, Melissa, happy the, the, the belated Valentine's Day. Is the, that a thing people I, say? Valentine's Day was this past week. So I guess if you guys out there celebrate happy Valentine's Day. Is that a thing? I, we're, we're, this isn't a classroom. I think you can wish a belated Valentine's Day to like your sweetheart, you know, sweetheart being a broad term. It could be your significant other. could be your mom. Yes, I don't know. Yeah. But <laughs> wishing happy belated Valentine's Day to your <sighs> platonic single friend is weird. <laughs> and just to like strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I just was, was hoping for an interesting way to start the po- podcast. And- <laughs> kind of be just like you know it's that time of year again it is february it's it's discount chocolate time of year i hope everyone enjoys that good stuff uh man we got some interesting things to talk about this week here on the podcast i'm kind of excited uh because it's just Mm -hmm. it's it's a big mix of stuff tonight not one thing in particular um but if you guys did not know this is number 223 of the whatnots captain's log where every week we thirst for the taste of vengeance no i did it again it's back the second vengeance time is back <laughs> kyle if you do this a third time vengeance it's juice sub- is gonna sub- show up subliminal. in your house it's it's like the bloody merry thing but if i say it one more time batman shows up at my house mm-hmm. right <laughs> Where every week we thirst for the taste of <laughs> legend. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how is your week True. been? It's been good. Can I read you all of the Cheesecake Factory cheesecakes? Uh, sh- sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please read me all of the Cheesecake Factory cheesecakes. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, original. Ah, Fresh strawberry. Thought. Oreo Dream Extreme Cheesecake. That's the one I'm getting. I'm going to Cheesecake Factory tomorrow. I already okay, I okay. already picked it out. You're planning Ultimate ahead. Red Velvet Cake Cheesecake. Reese's Peanut Butter Chocolate Cake Cheesecake. Some of these cheesecakes have a like cake cake inside them. That sounds good. Godiva though, yeah. Chocolate Cheesecake. Coconut Cream Pie Cheesecake. Adam's Peanut Butter Cup Fudge Ripple. No explanation on who Adam is. Perhaps from the, the Bible. The mystery should be solved at a later date, yeah. Pineapple upside down cheesecake. Celebration cheesecake. Classic Basque cheesecake. In the Spanish tradition, it is made with a delicious and uniquely burnt top. Caramel well, apple cheesecake. <laughs> Cinnabon cinnamon swirl cheesecake. Salted caramel cheesecake. Toasted marshmallow s'mores galore. Dulce de leche caramel. White chocolate raspberry truffle, mango key lime, fresh banana cream, very cherry Ghirardelli. It almost rhymes, but it doesn't. Uh, chocolate cheesecake, lemon raspberry cream cheesecake, chocolate tuxedo cream cheesecake for formal occasions, chocolate caramelicious cheesecake made with Snickers, chocolate mousse cheesecake, lemon meringue cheesecake, Hershey's chocolate bar cheesecake, 30th anniversary chocolate cake cheesecake also doesn't list what it's the 30th anniversary of i can presume it is is, the cheesecake factory this is like a pizza place that gives you multiple kinds of of just pepperoni pizza but it's just different yeah brands of pepperoni right (laughs) i i I don't understand it's the exact same thing but right yeah (laughs) No, oh, Kyle, what did I just tell you? Some of the cheesecakes are cheesecakes and some of them also have cake inside of them. Right. You have yeah. to look at pictures of these. It's truly decadent. It's so over the top. That's why there are this many. Uh, we've got so Lowlicious. Funny. Lowlicious with strawberries, vanilla bean, tiramisu, key lime, caramel pecan turtle. And finally, available from September, pumpkin and pumpkin pecan. It's qu- quite a list. Was there any Quite flavor you were indeed. hoping to see and you didn't? I don't think so. They've kind of got a lot of bases covered. I, I don't see like a toffee in there, but there's only so specific you can get. I mean, they have. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess toffee's not like a caramel flavor, but I would kind of put it in a similar wheelhouse, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. 
I don't know. Yeah, it's just caramel that's crunchy. Yeah. I don't know if it is really different. But they have I, like three in my different mind, kinds of chocolate. And it's like, you get the Hershey's yes. ch- chocolate cheesecake. You get regular <laughs> right. chocolate cheesecake. You get Ghirardelli chocolate cheesecake or something. Oh, like, yes. Just like, We've got like, Godiva uh, tuxedo chocolate, chocolate. Tux- Tuxedo means there is some like. Just that like white. Uh, like a white chocolate yeah, or right. something. Yeah, Hershey's chocolate bar cheesecake. See, that's one of those ones that has cake in it. Like in my mind, Cheesecake Factory is like the end of the universe. It's the be all end all of the restaurant experience. It's everything you've ever dreamt. It's all of Vegas Take that crammed into cafe. <laughs> Take that into Charles Entertainment cheese anchor. <laughs> So when I looked up this list of cheesecakes, even though it's so many, I still in my mind thought there must have been more. I thought there were like a hundred cheesecakes. I, 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 I feel like they would have to nix the restaurant part of that to have the like hundred different styles of cheesecake or it wouldn't be like mid, like I still don't break the illusion if this is not true but i still feel like they make all of those cheesecakes right there in the restaurant they do that- yeah i've i've no reason okay, to believe they don't Whew. I, like if they had a hundred <laughs> i feel like they wouldn't make them all there there'd, yeah. there'd be ones that they get like shipped to them and stuff like that maybe a few of them they do like the Ghirardelli ones or something they make in like a, a factory mm. or something who knows um mm. But I, I, I feel with a smaller list like that, when small is uh, not actually all that small, that was a really long <laughs> list there, but like smaller compared to like 100 different yeah. types of cheesecake. Um, Buffalo cheesecake, <laughs> teriyaki cheesecake. Right. Like, yeah, that, that felt more manageable. If that makes sense. I don't know. The actual origin of the Cheesecake Factory is that just a mom got good at making cheesecakes and her friends and family love the cheesecakes. And just has this one business minded son, adult son. I think he's an adult. He's not like 12. He's like, mom, Child you genius is like, mom, these. You have to- <laughs> they were from like Michigan or Minnesota or one of those. And he's like, you got to go to California. That's where it's happening, mom. Go out west, That's start a business. Cheesecake Mecca. So they would sell the cheesecakes and they would notice like the customers would love the cheesecakes, would come in, get like whole cheesecakes. And I think they started with like 12 flavors and business son would watch like where and like ask the customers like what else they were doing that day. He would track what else they were eating, where else they were going. The mm. other like really hot ticket food in the area. Try He's to like, get we a are the place to go for cheesecakes. Yeah. He's like, we're going to make the other thing people are going to other restaurants for. We're going to see if we can do it better. So that's why they keep adding things like we've got Southwestern egg rolls. We've got little lettuce taco cups. We have pasta. We have flatbreads. So interesting. They have everything because business son was like, add it all, add it all. And then they hit 250 individual menu items. And he's like, OK, that's got to be it. We must stop. <laughs> We are losing the trademark to Cheesecake Factory now that we have more things that are not cheesecake. Uh, therefore, we must stop and go back to cheesecake. <laughs> so I'm assuming you're going to Cheesecake Factory tomorrow then for your like Ant-Man quantum mania movie experience. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We were like, what is the most quantum restaurant? And it's the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> What restaurant has the most mania? (laughs) (laughs) The waiter's going to ask us, so are you guys celebrating a special occasion? And we're like, yeah, first film in phase five. (laughs) Ant-Man, that's what we're celebrating. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Speaking of which, I went to go see Ant-Man. I will hold my thoughts uh, (gasps) till next week and we can both do our Hollywood candle yankee goes to hollywood uh bit there but uh yes. wait another week to relax i i i mean are are you gonna be tense the whole time like oh my god what does kyle <laughs> think it smells like oh oh no i'm worried uh I did, no i i just figured it would be good if we could okay. both 
talk about it at the same time since we're both seeing it anyway guys yeah so, yeah. yeah why not we'll we'll do the candle to, uh next week yeah yeah but there you go i went and saw it thursday night so very nice had a blast had a blast good cool. good i'm glad you're keeping up your movie tradition of saturdays are the big day you go out and eat you have a blast that's fun yeah we, good, we truly do tra- every time tradition. it's i i love it i i do it by myself sometimes so it doesn't have the same magic last week i went to go see the titanic re-release right 25th yeah. anniversary of titanic the james cameron film not the boat uh in 3d took myself out to like yeah. shopping and lunch and like a big movie because i've been working a lot of overtime both at my day job and like i picked up an extra trivia hosting gig for somebody who needed as a substitute so i'm like saturday i'm gonna relax and then i get into the movie and i'm having a good time and then like it's the same thing that happened the last time i watched titanic it's like i really feel bad that all these people are dead <laughs> 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 So it's it's a good idea in theory, but I don't know if that's truly a relaxing movie. A movie, concept of movie, go to the theater relaxing. Titanic, maybe I gotcha. not. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, well, Melissa, I have a question for you here. Yeah. Um, so th- this week, one of the things that I've been watching on my own time is Money Heist Korea. Oh, um, yeah, I, so I I am a big fan of Money Heist, uh, Netflix's hit show. It's La Casa de Papel uh, in Spain, which is where it originated from. Uh, I, I think that show is fantastic. It gets a little ridiculous as it continues on, but it's still just a blast. It's so good. It's so much fun. Um, and I, I recently saw Money Heist Korea. And for a while, I was like, what does that mean? Like, what what is this exactly? And so I put that on my list of things to watch. I finally got to it this week. And yeah, I wasn't sure if this was like a new story, like new characters, but just happening in Korea or if this was a remake of the thing. Mm-hmm. And t- turns out it's a remake of the original sh- show. Uh, same characters, different actors, mm. same plot. Like same beat for beat plot. Um, they did have to change some of the backstories for some of the characters for it to fit in Korea and some like smaller plot stuff. Um, like the whole the whole thing centers around the like uh the joint economic a- area in Korea and like the unific like the the possibility of unification between the north mm-hmm. and the so- south. Um and uh besides that though it's the exact same plot huh. and i'm i'm having a really really interesting experience watching it because it is a foreign language show mm-hmm. so i can't understand what they're say- saying without reading the subtitles which you guys know me i watch a lot of foreign content so yeah. that's not a thing but because i already know the plot and the story, I find myself like not having to pay attention as much. And I can like check my phone and do all that stuff and look up and be like, oh, OK, they're at the death scene. And I know exactly what's <laughs> going on. So I, I I just think that that's neat. Like I, I I feel like I finally made it of like I can understand Korean, even though I can't. But like it's just like, oh, p- p- this has got to be how right? you start, though. This has got to mean something. At least you're going to know the word for money. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I, I haven't like picked up that exact thing. Um, <laughs> but my question after all of that, mm-hmm. my mm-hmm. question is, are remakes of television shows and movies f- from another country? Is that something that interests you? Like, with, like I, I remember when Breaking Bad was popular a couple seasons in i learned that there was a spanish remake i i I don't know if it was like mexican or something but like same plot like all that stuff just new actors like all that stuff never really checked up on it but apparently there's like a spanish 
remake of Breaking Bad out there? Like, are, is, is there stuff out there that you would be interested in seeing another country's, like, mm. not just take, but, like, remake on a certain thing? I... I'm, I think I'm interested in these as sort of a, a cultural curiosity. Like, I've never sought out all the different international versions of The Office. Like, not sure, just right, dubs yeah. of The Office, but Argentina got a group of actors together, and it's the Argentinian office, where they make Argentinian paper. Like, I like yeah. that that stuff exists, especially for such a broad premise that can be, like, really specific to, like, your own culture and whatever like those specific writers really want to dig into i like that that stuff's out there but i've never thought i gotta go see that <laughs> what is friends but in france <laughs> yeah like i i don't know how i feel about it because i on, on one hand i was like oh this is neat like it's the exact same plot like i i feel like i understand what's good going on but then i also find myself being like well you know what i kind of just prefer the original I, 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 but like, and not in a bad way. Like, I, I think the this Korean one is actually doing fantastically. I don't know mm -hmm. her name, but the actress that plays Sun in Lost, she's one of the main oh characters. Oh my god, I, Eugene Kim. Yeah, I, I've never had the opportunity to see her in another thing, and I wonder, like, once a year, will I ever see Eugene Kim again? She's in this. She's one of the main characters. Oh my god! She I might like the skip main... over the Spanish version and just watch the <laughs> Korean version if I can see her. She's like the main, like, but not detective, but like acts as like the main negotiator for, for, for the, the 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 whole thing. So yeah, it's it's interesting to see her in in this and like speaking. I mean, she spoke Korean through mm -hmm. most of Lost, but uh, you didn't know that. She could also speak English in that show, mm. too. Uh, but yeah, she is only speaking Korean in this. And yeah, it's neat. This is the the next thing. Like, this is the only uh, other t thing that I've seen her in. But my partner has been like when I when we started to watch Lost was like, oh, yeah, I've seen her in stuff like in Korean what stuff. Jerome, oh. some like romantic Korean drunk oh like she like that is the one thing i knew about her is that she was a bigger name actress yeah. in korea but i i just wasn't familiar with any of that at the t time and i guess i'm still not now despite like i i mainly stick to like the korean crime dramas <laughs> and stuff like that so I haven't really ventured into the romantic side of things but she's fantastic in this yeah so that's a whole week on the review show we find three things from yoon jin kim's career <laughs> right yeah <laughs> absolutely absolutely um but yeah that like the, the whole thing got me thinking though because i don't remember it it must have been early on when you joined the captain's log i may have mentioned this that i like i would kind of be really really interested on the comics on the on the comic mm. book side of things i would be really interested to see other artists take on already existing stories um yeah like crisis on infinite earths but drawn by jeff lemire or something like that right mm -hmm. um i i think that'd be interesting just to see what different artists would do not that i think that like crisis on infinite earth was good but the art was bad or anything like that I, mm. I, 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 I just think it'd be a neat experiment uh to, mm -hmm. to see what they have or to see like what different writers without changing like the plot like what they might embellish in the script or how they might make it like more conversational for modern day t times or something like yeah. that yeah um and and not and not do like their own like brand new story i don't mm. know i did did i have i mentioned that to you in the past you remember that me sounds vaguely familiar yes t t talking about that i just think that'd be a neat thing i'm i'm know. trying I, to think of what i want to see international versions of and i don't i not necessarily that i want to see this movie remade 
not that I would turn that down, mm-hmm. but I I wanted to see what is the equivalent of Napoleon Dynamite in other countries. Mm. Like what's what's the small town weirdo of Austria? Though, Who's though he? to be honest, I I I feel like if they could take that script, like do this exact <laughs> thing, like I. I think it'd be kind of weird to see and interesting, but yeah, it's the same, but it's whatever your culture's equivalent food to tater tots is. He shows in his pocket, his pockets full of pierogies or something. Yeah. I, that'd be interesting. What is the equivalent of Napoleon (laughs) dynamite in other countries? I would love to see that. That's fascinating. Um, because one of the things that also sparked this thought in my head, because this has been kicking around for a while in the back of my mind, is that at some point I want to pitch more K dramas on the review mm. show. So I was just looking around for some. There was one, um, uh, the Korean drama that I watched recently, Beyond e- Evil. I liked one of the main actors uh, that was in that. So I looked and like, what else is he in? Is there something that I can pitch? It turns out uh, he was in a Korean remake of Luther, the no! Idris Elba, like, detective. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and so I was like, like that's that sounds awesome. Like I I wouldn't know what that is. Um, I it's on some like K drama streaming service that I don't have, so I c- can't really watch it unless we both were like, let's go test mm. out. Um, but uh, or just on my own time, I guess I could go ch- ch- check it out. But still, um, it's like, well, I can't really put that one on my list of things to p- 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 pitch. But that was also one of those. Things of like, I know there's like some kind of Mexican Spanish something version of Breaking Bad out there. I know there's a Korean version of Money Heist. And the interesting thing about the Money Heist one is that the the original one is a Netflix original. Yeah, this one is also a Netflix original. So it's not like some other like studio went out and like hey looking with your blessing can we do this it's like no that they're like make a korean one Mm -hmm. that was it um so so yeah there's there's that there's that like korean luther thing i i just i kind of want to explore that world a little little bit more like what else is out there like yeah is, is is there an indian version of lost Oh, that'd be in like, would would you watch another country's version of Lost? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. I, if we I, can, I think if we can find that, too. I Lost is such <laughs> a, a, a multicultural show to begin with. You have so many characters is, coming yeah. directly from other countries, speaking a lot of different languages. I am curious what the makeup of it would be from another country. This is something we could do for a special episode of the Pilots Club where we take like the pilot episode mm. of a a show from its uh, uh, home country mm. and then we watch the pilot episode of the remake. Like we watch the pilot yeah. episode of Life on Mars and then the weird American remake of Life on Mars. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking that or like the like older version of a show and then like the modern take yeah uh stuff like that um could be be interesting but okay there you go there you go yeah that was just a a question i i had that was uh rattling around in the back of my head there so good stuff um let's take a quick break We'll do some housekeeping uh and then in the s- second half of the show here we got some pop culture news we got some trailer reactions to t- talk about uh and who knows what else uh so we will be right back here at the whatnots we make multiple different shows and a lot of hard work goes into making them so we would love it if you check them all out if you enjoy our shows patreon.com slash the whatnots is the best place to show your support 
For just a dollar a month, you can get early access to episodes and at our $3 tier, a Patreon exclusive podcast, The Pilots Club. You can even get a shout out and thank you on most of our shows at the $5 tier. And if you're one of our patrons already, thank you so much. It means the world to us. You can find out more information on our website, thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitch for video versions of the shows, trailer reactions, and live streams. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a hoodie or a mug or something else, head over to thewhatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. Big shout out once again to all of our Patreon supporters. Thank, Thank you so you. much. We appreciate it. Uh, cool things that we've been up to here at the Whatnots. Of course, our Patreon exclusive Pilots Club. Uh, we did Puchinski this month. That was a wild one. I had a blast talking mm -hmm. about that show or that pilot because it never made it to a actual no, full how could show. It? it was only the pilot who was that bad but it was also i that don't know good. <laughs> i don't know what the show would turn into i don't know what like the series finale of puchinski what oh. they could ever plan it to be he can't come back to life he can't go back from dog back into human like Maybe eddie that's... mcdowd could but there was a specific spell on eddie mcdowd like some old woman cursed him to be a dog puchinski i don't know what that was he just is dog now melissa we just came up with an awesome new idea for a segment here on the captain's log every so often. <laughs> Let's take a, a, a failed pilot <laughs> and we have to imagine what the like season finale looks like. What is that cliffhanger there? I think that'd be an, an interesting exercise. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, you guys can go check that out. That's at our three dollar tier on Patreon. Uh, and here on the Captain's Log last week, we caught up on some of the things we've been reading and watching. Uh, Melissa, you have been watching the Scream movies recently. Uh, I ah. did. Yeah, uh, I, I watched an Italian courtroom drama on Netflix called The Trial. Uh, and we reimagined the crime noir <laughs> genre, revolutionized, I might add. Absolutely. <laughs> the crime noir Kyle, genre. You got to get one of those maps. Like my parents have a map of the United States. And every time they take a road trip, they put a pen in the map. You got to get mm -hmm. a world map and fill it out for international Netflix shows you've watched. International Netflix. Yeah, right. Um, but... <laughs> Yeah, last week was good fun. Uh, and then on the review show this past week, we got the chance to listen to an audio fiction podcast called The Left Right G -G -G Game, which stars Tessa Th Thompson. Um, Melissa, this was one of your p pitches. Do you want to yeah. explain what the premise of that one was? Tessa Thompson plays a journalist who learns about this sort of urban legend underground game where you find a city with a good grid system. You get in your car, you take a left, a right, a left, a right, a left, a right, over and over and over and over again until eventually you just transcend the bounds of space and time and you go into another dimension. Exactly. And so she joins a caravan of drivers who are trying to cross into that dimension and go farther than anyone has ever been before. It's an interesting one. For sure. But yeah, mm -hmm. go, go check that out. Uh, and then last but not least, over on the reactor core, we are, of course, still doing our reactions to The Last of Us, uh, which has been an exciting one for sure. I know coming up in March, we got The Mandalorian. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, I was about to say, did I say that wrong? The Mandalorian. <laughs> um, yeah, that is coming up at <laughs> the start of March. At the end of March, also <laughs> Yellow Jackets. Uh, which I'm super excited we're gonna for. We're going to talk sure. about Pedro Pascal. And then when we're done with that, we're going to talk gonna about talk a different about... Pedro Pascal. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, yeah, be on the lookout for all that good stuff. But that's about it for housekeeping mm -hmm. right now. Melissa, Essex yes. County, March yeah. 19th. 
uh, you and I read this graphic novel a while back, like r- early on when when you mm-hmm. came on to the whatnots. And I, I, I think it's like safe to say it was ago. one of your favorite comics that we've read here. It's, it's a fantastic one. Mm-hmm. Um, but a, a while back, I don't remember exactly when they announced that they were developing this for TV. I hadn't heard anything since. And then today I finally saw uh, Jeff Lemire t- tweet out March 19th. It is coming to let me, let me see. if I can actually pull this up here. I have the tweet so you all can see it. Uh, let's get this up on screen. Come on, Internet. Do your thing. Magical heebie-jeebies of the Internet. There we go. OK, uh, so, yeah, it's coming to CBC and Gem. Uh, which I'm assuming are like Canadian networks and streaming mm-hmm. services because I'm not familiar with them here in the United States. But yeah, it's a thing. It's happening. It's happening real soon, which I think is fantastic. Um, Kyle, so we've never really outside of Jeff Lemire, we've never really looked to our neighbors to the north. Uh, on the review show for content. We've never thought, what, what are the well, TV shows coming out of Canada? I we we maybe have and just didn't realize it. I, I think it's mm-hmm. easier for us to just kind of gloss over like, oh, this is from Canada because they also speak English um, mm. or, or a lot. Lo- Except lo- when they do. speak French. Right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, I I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like there has to have been a few things in there that's like, oh, this is or at least one of the like main creators is Canadian mm. or something like that. Right. After but. we watched the Deadpool movies, Ryan Reynolds, a proud Canadian. I tried to find con- movies set in Canada and uh-huh. it was like a very, like a lot of them seemed sad. So- <laughs> I'm like, we're not watching the sweet hereafter. Welcome back so still- to the Whatnots Review Show. It's sad Canada week here. On- <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm I'm excited for Essex County. So hopefully it mm. makes its way uh, over somewhere here in the United States yeah. sh- shortly after. Um, I be an exciting one. I I looked at this little poster that he tweeted out. That is exactly the cover of the graphic novel. They matched yeah. it one for one. It's really impressive. It's cool for sure. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what that is and what they turned it into. Cause it's just this like slice of life anthology set in this little small town. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there was some connections between the stories, but each, each one was just kind of its own little small thing. which was neat. So, Good stuff. Good stuff. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Um, beyond that, we did get an update for the Marvels. Melissa, the Marvels oh, yeah. got delayed from July 28th this summer uh, to now their 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 late fall, early winter release in November. November 10th is when the Marvels yeah. is coming out. But we also got a brand new poster. Uh, for that one that had oh, I haven't seen that yet. Them. Let me see if I can p- pull it up on screen. New. I uh, I get most of my news from the new rock stars break room, uh, which is mm-hmm. the live stream they do every day, Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so I haven't yeah. had time to watch it yet. They probably talked about it. I'm sure I will learn more. Yeah, let me pull this up on screen so people can see it here. Oh. I'm on thingamabob. Oh, the thingamabob isn't working. I used to have my zoom thing in so I could zoom in on the poster, but I don't. That's something's funky with it now. But yeah, uh, has Miss Marvel down at the bottom, Captain Marvel in the middle, uh, and Monica Rambo up at the top that each have their like... Like a oh, like a shining fun. light star b- b- burst behind them in the shape of their logos, so uh, it's cool. It's fun, but yeah, it does look neat. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for this movie. They they are taking 
what pretty much used to be the former Blade slot. So I'm happy that yes. if Blade had to move, they're allowing other movies to have the same sort of cushion to them. You know, why, why let yeah. one delayed movie time slot go to waste? Maybe something else can take that. Who knows what's going to be in July now? Not anything from Marvel, but is some other movie going to swoop in there? Like, we want that July weekend. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, that's the thing that, like, I, I don't, I, I mean, there might be news on it out there of why it was delayed. I didn't really see anything significant. I'm wondering if there is, like, small reshoots or they, they needed to fix something on the post credits scene to include something else. Um, for months, many months. Who knows? Yeah, because I mean, July twenty eighth is right around the corner, so I feel, feel like most of this is done. Well, oh, I don't maybe know. just I don't know how to make a movie, right? Right. Maybe it's just extra time for visual effects. You know, I'll take. I'll wait several more months for a movie to know that, like, oh, you didn't have to sleep in your office. Congrats. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. No more. C- c- crunch all that stuff because yeah that has been a, a recent thing of like hey these marvel effects people disney effects people have been like overworked and underpaid for a while here um so yeah there you go we got that uh so we got a bunch of new trailers from mm-hmm. the super bowl and all of the, that stuff did, did you we, watch bowl i i did not watch the sports bowl uh thing here i i did my own own thing um that was it not a football I, guy <laughs> i i'm i'm not either but i i really want to give it a try not to like be into football i just want to have the a um, slightly better understanding of what it is when it happens around me yeah. when my dad has a game on i want to like stop but like this time it's like i'm going to stop I'm going to ask him questions. He's a real know-it-all, so he is going to want to answer my questions. It'll be a For nice sure. bonding time with dad. He can just, you know, give me all these trivia facts and things. Uh, so I'm trying to learn a little bit more about how it's put together and what all those numbers on the screen mean. That's cool. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the this Super Bowl was apparently a very, very good game, but... I I the go. score went up and down. Nobody had that much of a lead for that long, at least when I was there. I think yeah. I stayed like a little bit past Rihanna. Okay. Rihanna yeah. performance was cool. She's got these like floating platforms in the Ooh. middle of the stadium. I've never seen anything quite like it. It it, it was dazzling. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, there was a bevy of trailers yeah. uh, that we got for all sorts of things. I know there was like a a, a, a tease for the new like tr- Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, or what have you. Um, but uh, the, the one that I kind of want to t- t- talk about here was the Flash trailer. Now, I, yeah. we, we we did not do reactions to any of these, but Melissa, I want to know your thoughts on the Flash trailer. What did you think of this one? I'm happy I'm we got it. I'm happy we got it. Yeah. I did watch it. I've watched several breakdowns of it because I, I don't know DC that well. Really have to have that explained to me. I'm happy we got it. I'm happy it was as meaty as it was that they do have a lot to show us. I liked how it looked. I the We read Flashpoint and the number one thing in that that I loved was skinny, kept in the dark his whole life Superman. And we're getting that with Supergirl. And I'm very excited they're using that concept. Yeah. Um, it was like subject one was the character's name there. And that's where he gets the S. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, that like it, it's. Good that you've read Flashpoint because that's definitely the like launch pad into what this meow meow is so i i feel like you had some good ground to stand on there with that um it was it was neat to see michael caton uh back in his bat suit that was that was neat i i actually kind of liked the trailer yeah but i i still have such mixed feelings about this movie and ezra miller and all the stuff they've 
done and that hasn't been addressed really by the studio in any kind of meaningful way it's just the whole thing is i don't know but mm. uh i actually kind of liked the trailer it was cool to see yeah i i'll, I'll tell you i did i of course we all knew michael keaton's back nobody yep. told me michael shannon's back nobody told yeah, me zod was, was gonna be in this yeah um so in, in, instead of Flashpoint being like, oh, he creates a world where uh, Wonder Woman and Aquaman are at war and like half of the planet is sunk underwater, all of, all, all, all of the, that stuff. It sounds like he makes a world where no superheroes exist, period. Uh, mm -hmm. Which is interesting because I think that implies that he has connections to... Or like the, the the speed force has a hand in creating metahumans, period. Which is interesting. I, I, I don't know if they're going to explore that or not um, or what that means exactly. But that seems to be the universe he creates. And then I think has to like, yeah, be like, hey, Batman, help me out. Uh, hey, mm -hmm. Superman that's been trapped or super good girl that's been trapped underneath all of this stuff for so long help um my my only worry right now with this is that trailer looked bloated it looks like there's going to be a lot going on with this and the way spider-man 3 went and amazing spider-man 2 <laughs> went and like i i i just am kind of worried they're they're just trying to do too too much with this right introducing Kara and introducing Zod and or reintroducing mm -hmm. Zod. Yeah. Like it just, it feels like a lot. It feels like it's not a flash movie by himself. If that makes sense. Mm. Mm. I don't know, but yeah, I liked it so far. So good. good I think. Yeah. Guardians three trailer. Uh, yes. I'd love to see that. It's very emotional. Love the music choice. Mm hmm. Good stuff with that. Um, there was that air that the air the Jordan trailer for the new st yeah. stuff. Uh, I also got that as a trailer before uh going to see Ant Man and the Wasp. Ooh. Um, uh, which I guess looks interesting. I'm I'm not particularly I've... inclined to go watch that one, but looks good. I. I was in the other room and I heard my dad watching this on on the Super Bowl and I thought, OK, it's a movie about Michael Jordan. And I came in, I caught the end of it and I'm like, it's just about the shoes. The, it's about not about the basketball career, the just deal? the shoes. Yeah, it's about how he landed the deal. The, I, the I think it is. Deal. I think it is fascinating that sneakers and and the the Air Jordans themselves are such they carry such cultural weight that you can have an entire movie about them. I think that's they really do. Neat. They really do. like I, they're like they're I, still making them. They're still popular. They're still like super expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they're yeah. Like it, it makes sense from like a sneakerhead's perspective. But it's also like the only thing I'm interested in about that movie is the kind of like wheeling and dealing of it all like you re recently yeah. watched giraffe day uh which yeah. i know you were kind of completely lost in and in terms of like how does this what what football is it in this <laughs> which yeah, I, i'm not I, learning I, any rules of the game here i know a lot more about football so i i feel like i would understand it but i, I like that kind of maybe also like halt and catch fire like it, it yeah. has like a similar vibe to oh. that um yeah, yeah there's just some in an in interesting like un, uncut gems style yes. like how do we get I, this deal made i love stories about somebody trying to make a deal right right um but then i guess after the super bowl uh by a, a couple days um we got a trailer for tetris which is not a movie that i was ever ex like i i didn't know that this was being made uh or or anything like that um but 
once I, I saw someone post it in a Discord that I'm in, and I was like, oh, I have to watch this with Melissa. I feel like this is going to be such an interesting trailer. Um, I'm, I'm not even good at Tetris, but I know it has an interesting story. Yeah. Of like how it got made and stuff. And I'm not even super familiar with what that is. Um, so let me see. I'm going to see if I can. Tetris. 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 I'm hearing a bunch of sound. Um, yeah. So it's a movie that's about Tetris. It's not set within the world of Tetris. It's right, not about yeah. the blocks like Tiwi, Smash Boy, Hero, Cleveland Z, Rhode Island Z, Blue Ricky, and Orange Ricky. <laughs> the classic <laughs> blocks we all know and love. We're not exactly. going to see Orange Ricky doing their thing up there on the screen. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I, I figured we could switch over to a uh, reactor core. Well, that's our social media buttons, not what I meant to hit. Uh, but switching over to reactor core once that goes away. Bam, there we go. And we could do a, a trailer re reaction yeah. for t Tetris here. Um, so let me put that bang where it needs to be. Cool. I will kick things off. Welcome back to the Whatnots Reactor Core. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. Melissa, how are you? Yes, I'm. I'm doing fine. Happy to have a a quite an interesting new trailer to talk about. I like when we yeah. deviate outside of our normal big tent poles, big franchises to just find weird concepts like this. Absolutely, we have the Tetris trailer uh to react to right here and right now this is not even something i knew that was in the works that they were making um but yeah i'm a big vi video game fan so i know that just from kind of being around that the story of how like how te tetris got made is an interesting one but i also don't know what that story is exactly that's just like i've heard that it's an interesting one uh so I feel like I'm in for a, tr a treat with this this uh, tr this trailer here. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, I, I say we jump right in mm -hmm. and we can we can react to this. Let me pull it up on screen. There we go. Uh, and I will do our countdown from three and hit play. Three, two, one, play. Tetris, 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 Tetris. <sighs> it's the perfect game. Oh my God, look at him. That was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. Good old fashioned I computers. Five minutes. We love a dusty old grayish yellow. It's poetry. <laughs> I like this accent. In magical synchronicity. It's, it's the perfect game. Tetris. Tetris. <laughs> Tetris. 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 I don't get it. It's a combination Apple original of film. Tetra, Greek for four, <laughs> and tennis. Tennis. Okay. He's an inventor. He likes tennis. Hazel. Yeah. This game isn't just addictive. It stays with you. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Hank, only ten other people in the world have seen what you're about to see. It's <gasps> called the Game Boy. Package nice. Of the wow. Can you get us the rights? The Soviet Union like the music. Wide rights. Hey. Nothing gets out easily. I'm gonna go to Moscow. You're walking into a country <gasps> still considers America enemy numero uno. Okie dokie. You sure you don't have to talk to your wife about this first? Pioneers have to bet the house to win. But not literally. Listen. Have you ever heard our apartment this quiet before? <laughs> This looks so yeah, cool. Pixel art. Your game is brilliant. I'm going to make you a millionaire. Mr. Rogers, have you ever negotiated with the Soviets? We're here for Tetris. We've seen this talk What do you say? I don't speak Russian. <laughs> <laughs> the most powerful man in Communist Party is watching you and your family. Do you know where your husband is? What the hell I feel like I'm supposed to say stuff, but I'm just really engrossed. Right? I, I mean, that, that, that is our reaction. We're so fascinated yeah. on <laughs> what this is. <laughs> my reaction is, I'm ready. I'm sitting here quietly watching it right now. Forget the rules. We'll 
I am so down for this. This is criminal. The Soviet Union is about to implode. They're lying. Everybody's lying. Go home. The cavalry is coming. We don't have time. I have a plan. <laughs> oh my god! Kings of cliffhangers! God, I hope this thing is full of pixels. This is awesome. This looks Not so bad. cool. Not bad. Rated R. For oh, real it's a gamers. Whole film. <laughs> R for real gamers. R for retro tech dramas, my favorite genre. Yes. I need to find everything that's in this genre. I need to wring it dry. Yes, absolutely. I loved the vibes uh, we got with the, with this here. I mean, I, I, off the bat, this immediately reminded me of Billion Dollar C Code, which we watched mm -hmm. on uh, the Whatnots Review Show, one of our uh, other podcasts, Halt and Catch Fire, uh, like all the, one of all our that, favorites. Like, this is speaking our language. Yeah, <laughs> our, this is our so language good. is like green characters on a black screen where a yes. guy types and types all night and he gets divorced. That's yes, my favorite this, genre. This looks so good. But that like that's the thing. I'm I'm interested to to see like how they do mix in some of the pixel art stuff that we did mm -hmm. see. Is this in Love effect that. how much of this I mean because this is supposed to be based on a true story. But how much are they embellishing? Is that when they're going to start to bring in some of the pixel art to like maybe like, OK, this didn't really actually happen. But here you go. Boom, boom, boom. Here's a like reenactment. I don't know. I, yeah, I I'm fascinated by what yeah. this is or what this could be here. Um, you know, but before before you, you and I were recording the, this we were t t t talking about the new trailer to that like Air Jordan movie. I don't remember exactly what it was called, uh, but that also had a very similar vibe to yeah. this. I'm just like, how did this deal get made? Right. I'm so excited. I this, I this want like all blast. the next big wave of films to be product origin stories. I need McFlurry, the movie. <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need them all. What's something in your life you take for granted? We're going to tell you about it. Yeah. Um, and this is coming to Apple TV Plus. So good on them. Appropriate. They're, they're getting some more, yeah. some more good stuff here. Yeah. I'm yeah. Excited and they've got like a lot of really sure. strong series, but I, I have heard less about their films. Except they, for Academy Award winner Coda, yeah, they they do put a couple out every now and then, and I think they're they've been per, like known to do pretty well, or they're at least trying to make them like mm. it's the newest Will Smith movie, um, yeah, or it's the newest Tom Hanks banger, right? It's something <laughs> like that. Um, oh, I love a good <laughs> Hanks banger. <laughs> Hey, Hanks is always making bangers, you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's good stuff. That's good stuff. Yeah, but that was fun. I'm looking forward to this one for sure. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be a blast, but I think that wraps us up for our reaction to Tetris. Uh, Melissa, where can the people find you on the internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities. For sure. Uh, and if you guys would like to stay up to date with me, I'm at Yo Kyle Springer. Uh, and if you guys would like to follow all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots. So please go like, share, and subscribe. You guys know the deal with all of that. And we will catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Cool. Uh, We've returned. Well, here we are. We have, we have returned. We are still okay. tr trucking along so i i i also put the john wick for final trailer yes. in our Discord yeah. cord for us to react okay. to what you did was you put you put it in there and you said also this if we want and i didn't respond because i figured that was a given i want okay i, <laughs> I figured you I, would just know that i 
yeah so my my thinking was the trailers for this have already been out right this Mm. is the the final trailer um but uh also this was one of the trailers that was uh, on my like ant-man quantum mania Uh uh stuff so now i've technically already seen it but i'm happy to okay. watch it again and do a reaction we don't, we don't to have to react um, to it we can just talk about it and that it looks very cool i'm very yeah. excited it's so colorful i i like that it's it's got a lot of the emotional stakes in it and this is a franchise that really has earned those emotional stakes like you really do care about all these characters mm-hmm. it's not just like neon lights and shoot 'em ups yeah yeah, I mean, also it's got it the that, Soprano it song also. in it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 an interesting trailer. I'm excited to see what they do. If this is like, uh, are there meant to be more after this one? It, is are, this wrapping there might things be five? Up? I think I, I heard there's supposed to be five. But if if this is kind of meant to be like him getting back at the organization like is he gonna go table. F- fight yeah if, is he gonna go fight what's his name the one dude who was out in the middle of the desert that let like that that would be i would like to see that actor in like more high stakes like action stuff mm-hmm. I've, i don't think i've really seen him do much choreography stuff so that we need to see him in that but then I don't know. He wasn't in this trailer. So I, who knows? Who knows? Oh, I think you see him briefly. I think they go to he Paris. A, uh, I really want him to slam somebody into that glass pyramid on top of the Louvre. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, I, I was just watching Lupin on Netflix. Um, Ooh. And there is a scene. Yeah. Where a car c- crashes into that big pyramid. <laughs> pyramid on on top of the uh i think it's stuck like the whole thing like caves in but like bends in and the car gets stuck there uh so it's fun but yeah good good trailer with that i'm excited to see all of those characters return uh stuff like that it's gonna be exciting we got some Mm. good movies coming out there's have you seen a trailer for a movie called Inside? It's ringing a bell, but I don't remember if I saw the trailer. Let me look it up and see see what this I, is. It's I the, the title's relatively generic. But you would remember if you saw this trailer. Uh, Willem Dafoe is some sort of an art thief. He hacks his way into this high rise like high-tech penthouse and to steal some painting off the wall and then something goes wrong he triggers an alarm whoever his guy is on the outside helping him get in is like no man you're on your own and like abandons him and he Mm -hmm. is trapped inside this apartment where whoever Mm -hmm. owns it must be out on some long you know like they're not going to be there for ages the whole thing's got electricity and power so it can still power that like high-tech security system but there's no food the water isn't turned on. Mm. There, I, like there's something wrong with the thermostat. So it keeps getting hotter. And Willem Dafoe is just stuck in there going mad. Interesting. Yeah, I'm watching the trailer now. It, it, it looks kind of c- cool. I'm I'd, real I'd excited for ch- this ch- thing. Ch- check it out. Yeah. It comes yeah, out, yeah, I think, yeah, March 10th. March I saw 17th the trailer. is what it says. Oh, I swear it's they moved it back a week because I know it's a 10th man. I I saw the trailer when I went to go see the whale of all things. Mm. Yeah. Maybe this is uh, the, maybe they're from the same studio. Maybe they're like, could this get Willem Dafoe an Oscar nomination? It probably could. You know, we're playing it and just in front of other Oscar nominated lead performances. But have, I'm excited. Have you seen Man vs. B? on netflix i I have not seen with my own eyes man versus b but you know what i'm talking about yes yes it has been a a running joke on my brother my brother and me the podcast i've watched it 
<laughs> I All have of watched it? Man vs. Bee. It's six episodes. They're they're like twenty minutes each. Uh, it's super fast. Um, <laughs> Spend a whole but, day on it. Uh, yeah, but it's it, it's almost the same premise as this. <laughs> he's oh my god he's like the like the there's this rich family that has uh like a live in like house like house sitting uh service that when they're on vacation for a long time like all of the their stuff will be up kept their dog will be fed and the guy that's supposed to go there gets sick and he can't go so uh, Rowan Atkinson, of of course, who famously plays Mr. Bean, uh, he he accepts the, this job. He g- g- goes there, and there's a bee inside the house, and he <laughs> cannot, for the life of him, kill this bee. And he just starts swatting at the, everything goes wrong. He just starts the, the sprinkler. It gets everything wet. He starts a fire. He leaves something in the oven. He messes with this thing. He tears up some famous painting. Robbers are at the house at the same time. It's just the whole thing is just ridiculous. Um, but I love, it, yeah, it reminds I love me a the lot summary. of this. <laughs> I love the summary of just he goes there. There's a bee. That's it. And that's the entire like what <laughs> what I described is the entire show. It's not yeah. just like, oh, that happens in like the first 10 mm. minutes, and then you'll you find out some more stuff gonna. That's the whole show. That's it. Done. <laughs> of course it's the whole show. There's a bee. It's not like the opening act to anything. The cold open to a James Bond movie is not there's a bee. James Bond and the quantum stinger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. On the but Queen yeah, Bee's this, Secret <laughs> Service. This reminds me of that a lot. He gets stuck in this house and everything just goes wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> It's it looks like he goes so mad so quickly. Like there's nothing yeah. in there for him. There's the painting he came to steal. You see him like licking the condensation off the yeah. walls of the freezer cuz there's nothing for him to eat or drink. There's that like one fish that they have in the aquarium and he's like, "How do I catch that and eat it?" All that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Wild. Wild stuff. Uh well there you go. I don't think we have anything else on our list. No. I don't believe so. We covered it all for this week. There we go. Mission accomplished. Which means I think this is a good place to wrap things up for this week's podcast. Um uh, Melissa, I were I know I normally try and get you to do your social media stuff again at the end here, but since we just did that one right yeah. there at the end not long ago, I won't make you you remember from again, earlier this t- time yeah uh so i'm i'm gonna go ahead and hit that youtube end button and just kind of end things here <laughs> yeah uh that said though if you guys want to stay up to date with all the stuff that we do here at the whatnots we are at the whatnots uh on all sorts of social medias go check out our other videos right over there on that side if you're watching the youtube version of this that would help us out a ton And yeah, this has been number 223 of the Whatnots Captain's Log. We will see you all next time. Bye. Bye.